So welcome back guys um, to my YouTube channel. And I thought I'd give you really a weekly installment of what's going on, but I think a good place to start would be really why I chose to buy and what's been kind of the reasons and how I've actually got to, to actually be living here for just over a year now. Um, you know, my career started in a state agency high street estate agency my first sale was like twenty five thousand pounds was the value of the shared ownership property in milton Keynes. i think i earned 65 pound commission um from selling it i was happy with that at the time <laughs> but, um, and that was uh, where it all started but i had a real bug for it you know because i was in school and i was a bit of a real troublemaker in school you could probably tell from how I am in general, um, always getting in little scraps, always getting in trouble with the teachers, constantly in detention. But my grades are pretty good. So like I had A's in English language, English literature. I'm quite good with my language and um, vocally and how I, how descriptive I am. I have a real plethora, plethora of knowledge. Um, and I think that um, I use that well in selling because I can, I think that your language is your, is your most powerful tool and I was always obsessed with it when I was in school. Um, but then maths, I had basic maths, um, but I didn't like it when it started getting into algebra and you know, if a train's traveling this fucking fast, what time is it gonna arrive and all that stuff is all, all bullshit to me. I just think, when are you ever gonna practically use that? I remember then um, going and taking business studies because I had an interest in business and um, weirdly, you might think this is a lie, but I genuinely remember saying to the business studies teacher, if you know so much about business, then why aren't you running a business? And got kicked out of that class. Um, and so it was a bit like when you heard the Tate thing with what color is your Bugatti and all that, it's a very similar sort of um, little story because I remember doing it in business and um, it was because I wanted to learn business. I wanted to learn how to run and grow a business. Um, but anyway, I was uh, an estate agent for years and I loved it. I, I loved selling because I was doing that as part time when I was at sixth form. I hated school. I absolutely hated it. I didn't get on with anyone. I felt like a bit of a loner when I was about 15. Um, didn't really have many friends there. And I just was wondering where the hell I was going to go. I felt a bit of an outcast, actually. And then I, my dad got me a job in this estate agents. I made friends with everyone really quickly. I was a machine. I was making loads of phone calls. I was booking loads of viewings, getting loads of deals done. And suddenly I'd found my like calling. It was like, I could, you know, I was working seven days a week. I absolutely loved it, like loved it. And I was selling a lot of houses. Um, I became very, very um, successful in my own right within High Street Agency, joined a few different companies, was a sales manager at like 22 or something like that, driving around in this really cool new shape Audi A3 S line, a good 30, 35 grand a car, which, you know, was amazing for me at that time. And um, I felt like the dog's bollocks, to be honest, but it just hit the plateau. Um, because I couldn't earn any more money, couldn't earn any more money. And I was, the, the owner of the company would um, turn up in his Aston Martin. And I used to think, how am I ever gonna drive a fucking Aston Martin when I'm earning 1,800 pound a month or 2,000 pound a month, you know? I, I could barely make payments on whatever I was making payments on. So it just kind of burnt me out really. I got very demotivated. And um, I felt very let down by the industry. I was always getting made promises and this was going to happen, that was going to happen, it never happened. And um, I ended up just becoming a complete fucking rebel. Um, you know, I'll go into it a bit more in another video, but it's no secret that I went, you know, around 10 years ago, I, you know, I went down the wrong path, ended up getting myself nicked and uh, had to do a lot of soul searching as I spent, you know, two years, um, you know, searching basically. Um, as that happened, um, you know, I, I was reading a lot of books um, and I realized actually, as I'd come out of a state agency, because I hated it, I'd, I'd really grown to hate it because I couldn't earn the money I wanted to earn. I went back into it and negotiated a commission only role with a company. And as I did that, 
I started real, you know, earning some good money. There was months where I was earning five grand, six grand, eight grand, ten grand. One month I earned over twenty-five grand. And it was huge money. Like cr never ever seen any money like this in my life, by the way. Like, trust me, I'm not someone who's had loads of money in my bank account and I've been able to try businesses and do this. I have literally been to a point, uh, a point multiple times where I don't know where I'm going to get money from to pay rent, where I'm going to get money from to like buy clothes, do all these types of things. I'd end up hustling and doing different things to do it. I would quit a lot of jobs. I was a very erratic person uh, growing up. And then as I started, but I always wanted to do business. That's the thing. And it used to annoy me that I couldn't just be in an environment where I could get paid what I was worth based on my results. Because my results were always better than everyone, if not at least 95% of people that I was ever working around. So it did really get to me. And um, then I joined this other company, started growing with them, but they couldn't allow me to grow my own team and actually build a proper name for myself and actually a brand. So that ended up becoming, um, you know, going nowhere. So I'm just trying to change lanes here. It's fucking impossible here. Um, and then I realized this is only going to happen because I started building myself up to a big name um, on social media. I was doing a lot of property video tours at the time when I was the first to do it, um, touring people around really nice houses and making that all grow. And then we had a team that was sort of around me that came over and we started and I started Tyron Ash International um, or it was Tyron Ash Real Estate at the time. Um, and that was where it all began. And I was an agent within the business for the first, I'd definitely say 12 months. Um, but it grew into a point where, you know, I was training everybody because I developed and researched and done so much self-development on how to be a great real estate agent because I became obsessed. Obsession is a big word I use a lot in this industry. You've got to become obsessed with getting those results. You know, you've got to be obsessed with becoming the best at something. You've got to be obsessed and want to work longer than the person you're in competition with. Work harder, make more calls, knock more doors, speak to more people, get more listings, get more sales done, earn more money. You've got to be obsessed with that relentless pursuit because if you're not, then I promise you, you'll get nothing for it, especially when you're in a commission only uh, results driven role. So I really started nurturing and, 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 and uh, training people within the business and that became my sort of sole purpose. And I started getting pulled operationally into what I needed to do to help others. Cause that was the big thing. The real driver for me is that no one helped me when I was desperate for an opportunity and I use the word desperate I was desperate for an opportunity I wanted someone to say to me just get on with what you're good at doing and we will pay you this much for, for getting those results in that's all I ever wanted and then when you realize it never comes the frustration mounts that's when people do stupid things to make money try and cut you know sh uh, find shortcuts try and make money in the wrong way get in arguments, fall out with people. And it's always about significance for me. Significance is a word I use a lot because it's something that I think applies to a lot of people. Um, if you, people get significance in a number of ways. You know, if they are a charity worker and their significance comes from helping as many people as possible and they're not just motivated on, you know, they're not just motivated on like, how you know how much how many millions they can get in the bank they want to see how many millions of people they can help and how many wells they can build or whatever it might be then that gives them significance it gives them recognition and obviously purpose as well if you are an underachieving salesperson you will initially get significance I knew he was going to change lane um, you're going to get significance from getting those results but then what happens is you're gonna see others bypassing you in that same industry, earning more money, driving a nicer car, you know, whatever it might be. And then your significance is gonna diminish and you're gonna start getting the inferiority and the frustration um, seep in. And then that will make you wanna make another decision. And, it, and people will always either, they'll get to that crossroads and whatever they do, 
and they'll either take the leap of faith and grow or they'll not have the balls to do it and then they'll be in a salary job for the rest of their life and that will be their that will be their outcome it will never change they've never done anything to change that outcome and that outcome will never change and when it's like that you know everyone's got a crossroads that they've got to face at some point or another and that's always what it is so for me that cross crossroads happened you know multiple times and I always always take the leap of faith into the next stage because I know it's behind the things that you're scared of doing that's where the the amazing results will come you know fear is often the gatekeeper of the result that you really really want and it's through the comfort of easy things regular salaries comfortable living you know not pushing yourself not learning enough not working hard enough knocking doors on a rainy tuesday night when you could be sat inside with your missus all these things that are like comfortable things that you'd rather be doing is behind the actions of the stuff you don't want to do that's where you get the big results because no one else wants to fucking do them that's the reality of it no one wants to fucking do it so when you see someone who's made loads of money built a big business i'm not saying everyone has this action these takes these actions but a lot of them do a lot of them will have worked a lot harder than your normal person and it's the normal person that will slag them off that will say they've only got there because of this they've only done this because of that and that's not true um you know i've been to hell and back for this business hell and back like it's been an unbelievable journey and one that's continuing and is really shifting up to the next phase now. Um, the revenue is quadrupled from last year. Um, the quality of professional agents, self-employed agents, leaders in the business that are in this business is absolutely phenomenal and staggering to the point where they are far more profitable running through this vehicle and this operation than they are trying to set up an independent agency or a one-man band or whatever it might be because I want people to become wealthy you know I don't want to be the only one that's driving a fucking g-wagon Brabus or whatever I want people driving Rolls Royces we've had people collect multiple supercars in the business and the reason is is because you know it, it really can develop that much money for you if you become very very good at it and that's what i always wanted as an opportunity had one of those companies given me that opportunity i probably wouldn't have been here now weirdly because i'd have been happy and i'd have been earning a lot of money but who knows and um really what happened was we got it up to an amazing level um we then started attracting um attention through production companies that led to the television show Mega Mansion Hunters that was on Channel 4 that raised our profile even further um, I wasn't necessarily that happy about Mega Mansion Hunters because we had they cut loads of amazing scenes they made it too raw the footage a little bit too docky when we had some beautiful scenes shot in some amazing locations to make it a lot classier but I think they wanted to make us look a bit really rough around the edges and as much as we are batter the door down aggressive salespeople um, and I mean that in a business sense um, you know we were we're also you know we've also got a classy side and eat at some nice places and go to some nice restaurants and mix with some nice people and it's like you know they, they just cut all of that and um, you know that was very frustrating but you know TV's TV exposure is exposure isn't it so well, that grew even further we've got a you know a workforce of probably 150 plus agents now um i think we sold like 24 houses last week which last week that would be nice uh, last month which um you know is in the quietest month of the year in august and i think we're already on over a one sale a day in september at the moment so the business itself is growing at an astronomical rate um the you know taking you back you know why did we come to dubai well why did i bring it to dubai it was the like i just said a minute ago it was the fear of the unknown in the in london in london everyone knows me like i you know i can walk anywhere in mayfair and i can go to these restaurants and 
the roll out the red carpet, not literally, but everyone knows me. It's very easy. I'm very well known and, and that's good. And like, you can almost get very comfortable with that. But then Dubai is a whole other animal. You know, I'm not, I wasn't really known. I, I was known in my industry, but everyone knows who Tyra Nash International is in Dubai because most people are real estate. There's a lot of real estate agents out here and we're a big name in the real estate industry. But, but I haven't come here and done it. You know, never come here and done it. So suddenly you start thinking, God, this is a bit scary, isn't it? I'm going to be the new guy on the block and I've got to prove myself. I've got to take a existing business. I've got to mold it into the Dubai way of doing it, learn the Dubai way of doing it, start delivering results and do it out of nothing Red really. And you know, we've done it and we're here, we've been here just around a year and doing some crazy numbers. Um, I've had to fire a lot of people as well because the culture wasn't correct. The problem with Dubai, which I've found is a different problem to the UK. The problem with Dubai is that a lot of people like the idea of coming to Dubai to do real estate. I've said it in many videos. And what they don't realize is that there's actually hard work involved. And you know, you've actually got to learn the industry. There's a hell of a lot of competition. You've got to work harder than your competition. You've got to be clinical. You've got to have good market knowledge. You've got to be able to close. You've got to be able to help build people's investment portfolios. You've got to think outside the box. There's so many rubbish agents out here that if you are actually good, you will clean up, clean up. Because light camera ahead. the good people, they stand out from the crowd and goes, oh, there's, it's saturated. There's thousands of agents. Yes, there is, but they're all rubbish. So it's very easy to stand out. You know, it's very easy. And when this happens, when this happens, like, well, when it started happening, should I say, it was like, God, we're actually gonna, we're actually gonna bypass a lot of companies very quickly. And we're gonna bypass some companies that have been here four or five years within probably about 18 months. And that's in revenue, that's in size, that's in a, a number of different measurables. Red, light, and for me, that is exactly what I'm here to do. I'm not here to mess around with it. Um, obviously there's other, other reasons I came to Dubai, I think the lifestyle side of things, um, you know, it's very much a case of like, you know, you're safer here, I can wear a watch here, I'm not concerned about, you know, the crime. Obviously the weather, you can see it's like 40 degrees out there now. Um, that's really, really a massive side of it because, you know, the one thing I do quite like is, um, you know, when you are in the UK, and I do love the UK, I travel back often, and that's this isn't me slating the UK, it's about what's right for you. Um, but the one thing is, when it comes to Saturday or Sunday and you need a recharge, you can go to a beach club for a day, pitch up on the sunbed, put your phone down, recharge, relax, and you know, you'll, you feel brand new by Monday, and you've got a bit of sun, and you've eaten some nice food, and all this sort of stuff. It's a bit harder to do that in the UK because it doesn't exist. Um, and then of course, the, comp the competitive nature of Dubai. Now it brings out the worst in people as well. I've seen some horrible little bastards out here that are Red just ripping people, off, rip ripping people off, trying to, you know, fleece people for money, lying, not delivering on services they can, um, all these different things. And, you know, everyone's on the hustle. That's the thing, everyone is on the hustle. But if you are good at what you do and you are a genuine business person in any field and you've got a very high work rate, you're a likable person and you can network well, you've got a, a mountain of opportunity here because there's just so many people with money who are conversing to do business and they'll be very, very open to it if you bring value. You know, value is a, an overused word now, but if you have actually got a valuable product or service, you will hit in Dubai. And there's a lot of people with money, with a lot of money, who are willing to do business. Very, 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 very straightforward. So that kind of brought me here. Obviously, tax implications in the UK. I was getting slammed for some heavy tax bills. And, um, you know, it's, I was getting quite, quite tired of it. 
Um, and what we've realized now is, um, you know, that it is better to be operating from Dubai um, and of course expanding the business to, um, and expanding the business, which has now meant we've got two huge arms of the business that are building a lot of revenue. So it's a multitude of things that brought me here. I was coming here on holiday like three, four times a year because it's year round weather. The hotels are like fucking impeccable. Like even just your average hotel is very good. Um, service is very, very good. The food is very, very good. It is very, very nice place to live. Um, could I live here my whole life? I'm not sure. But what I can tell you is wherever I live, you know, I'm going to be giving it 110% because I'm not, it's a very big move for me to come here. I don't just come here and hope to do all right. Like there's a lot of people here, they're just fucking chances. And you know, they've built these little real estate businesses. They're making no money. They're hiring anyone. And that's just not me. Like I want, I want solid people who want to make serious money, who wants to, who want to effectively change their lives for the better, improve their lives for the better and be part of the business as a collective because when you grow it the business tends to grow underneath you as well you know so that's where we are that's how we've got here and um you know it's an exciting period of of, of, of my life because i think it's a great place to live um and you know who knows where the next expansion is going to take us but i hope that gives you some good insight guys click like and subscribe um, appreciate the support and the engagement and um, yeah, feel free to reach out if you want to do some business.